everyone, Chelsea Studio here, and today we are trying Japanese air dry clay. Hi guys, welcome back to the studio. So I went to a store called Daiso recently and picked up a couple of blocks of air dry clay that I'm going to share with you guys today. Um, unfortunately, the second block that I got dried up. Oh my gosh, what happened to you? Who hurt you? <laughs> so I tried to reactivate it and I think I messed it up because it just got way too squishy. That was a fail. But the other one is seems to be okay. So we're gonna go ahead and test that one out. This one, which is a, it says clay made with wooden powder, like this. This one's in a bag because my cat was playing with this and she poked a hole in it and I was worried it would dry out and I didn't want it to dry out. So it's still not opened. I haven't had a chance to play with it, but you know, better safe than sorry. You can see that it says uh, made in Japan right there. Um, most things at Daiso run a couple of bucks. I would have to look it up to get the exact number for you guys, but I, I'm almost positive it wasn't more than three or four dollars for both of these. So I guess without further ado, let's get started. All right, I am starting with the clay made with wooden powder. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna make with it yet, but before I make anything, I am just gonna play with the clay a little bit. Um, let me get some scissors. Ugh. Oh gosh, that smells awful. Don't recommend it based on the smell. It says for ages three and up. Whoa, that's weird. Wooden power, micro capsules, natural fiber, water, synthetic glue. Huh, interesting. Um, okay, so right off the bat, it kind of feels like model magic. I don't know if any of you guys have ever played with Model Magic before. Ooh, see this part is actually already dry. This was the part that was closest to the tear. I wonder if water reactivates it. A lot of time with air dry clays, they can be reactivated with water. So um, I'll just have this just in case. Put a little water on my surface here and just Oh, it soaked it up like a sponge. That's weird. Uh, definitely got mushy. I wonder what happens. Maybe I'll just leave in this over here as an experiment and let it soak up as much water as possible. Well, I left that over there. This is so weird and it gets really slippery if you wet it. It is falling apart a little bit. I'm just gonna take the whole thing out. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's so weird. Okay. It breaks apart almost like that weird kinetic sand stuff. But then whenever it's squeezed into like a ball or a shape of any kind, it feels like almost like a soft styrofoam. It's very strange. It doesn't keep its shape very well. I guess maybe I should make something. Yeah. Well, it is Japan. Let's try and make a little Hello Kitty head. I'm gonna get more though. <coughs> it stinks. Ugh, don't do that. It stinks. Use in a well ventilated area. Hello Kitty. Um, I have one here. She will be my model. Oh, I need to put it. Oh, gross. Get, get over there, Mr. Clay. Okay. Oval head. It's like a flying saucer. With like air dry clay, you can smooth out a lot of these cracks with water. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot. Put it on the desk and then use my hands to apply. Oh, okay, look, it is actually 
smoothing out those areas. Just be sure that's where you want it to go. Like you won't be able to reshape after you've done that. So maybe I'll just The places that I have put water, they're like getting fuzzy. It's erasing the cracks, but I feel like it's only a surface level solution. It's not really helping it structurally. I think this might be as good as it's gonna get. It's just gonna continue to dust off and flake off. So another key element of be using clay is being able to put two pieces together. So again, whenever you're using other clays, the idea is that you can put water and a little bit of clay together and make that makes a, a glue that's called slip. And whenever you put the slip on the piece you want to attach as well as the main form itself, they'll stick. I'm getting some of the glue, or glue. <laughs> Getting some of the clay remnants off my hand and into the little puddle that I've made. I'm sure using a bowl would be more intelligent but whatever I'm going for efficiency here and I don't want to get a hashtag lazy okay so see I've made a little bit of a goo here oh but I'm not even ready with my other piece okay oh wow it's already drying oh bad idea Chelsea I'm just gonna put it back in this bag spray a little Pro tip, if you want water-based clay, not dry, then spray it with water when you put it in a baggie. And then I'm gonna make some ears. Put a little bit of slip on it and then attach. Also on normal clay, you would have to score the edge of it to make it truly stick. But again, this isn't normal clay. Now to the bow. Okay, bow's done. I'm gonna set this aside to dry. Okay, from the magic of video, our little Hello Kitty head is dry. It feels really light. Feels pretty sturdy. All the parts that I glued on don't feel like they're gonna fall off, so that's good. Well, not glue, but slipped on. Got my nail file, and now I'm going to just try and sink it down a little. All right, so the nail file worked pretty well. It's still a little fuzzy, but I'm thinking that maybe when I paint over it, that will be eliminated. Let's go ahead and get some white paint and paint it. Okay, I'm just gonna use some acrylic gesso for the white. I'm just gonna reuse this plastic as a palette. And then I just have this generic brush that I will paint it with. Okay, I'm gonna let this layer dry and then we will start adding the details. Okay, all the layers are done drying, so now we're gonna add the details. This one has a magenta pinkish purple bow. We're gonna go ahead and do a red bow. Um, instead of this pink one. Just because red's my favorite color. So now we have a yellow nose, some black eyes, and some black whiskers. Let's do the yellow nose first. I always get the placement wrong, so here's hoping that I can actually get my life together today.
Oh no, I think I did them way too close to the nose. Definitely too close. Not great, but not terrible. Definitely not a 3D artist, but the clay was really fun to work with. Um, I'm kind of scared to squish it, but it does feel like a squishy almost. Like it feels like, oh no. Well, that's why I was scared to squish it. So I'm gonna reshape it. Either it's not all the way dry in the middle or it's just not meant to be squished. Final review time for this clay made with wooden power, power, clay made with wooden power from Daiso. Not super easy to work with. If you are somebody that doesn't know a lot about clay, if you've never used clay before, there is a big learning curve to this. I really wish I could have compared these two, but I might need to save that for another video because this is just, it's just not working. Yeah, I have the rest of the this clay made with wooden powder in this plastic bag, so hopefully it lasts. I haven't painted with acrylics in a while, so I'm excited to get through the color theory videos. That way we can talk about color mixing and then I can show you some really cool stuff about acrylics and watercolors. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe down below and then hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. If you guys want to see more of my artwork, head over to my website and check out all the prints and stickers I have over there. And then if you want to see some behind the scenes, follow my Instagram. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you next week. Bye!